Warning, this podcast may contain subliminal messages from the devil. Semi-cognizant eukaryotes of Earth. Your limited understanding of space and time render your questions from whence and when these messages are coming irrelevant. If you are listening, rejoice, for your inevitable conquest and obliteration have not yet been realized. They are soon forthcoming. But first, you shall tremble on hearing scary noise! She was afraid she would be alone, but she was far from it. Thanks so much for coming over. I don't know what I'd do watching this big, creepy house by myself. No problem, babe. The only thing that's going to grab you in the dark now is me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, Brian. Mm. Oh, yeah, girl, that's it. Yeah. Oh. Give me some sugar now. That's right. Don't touch yeah. me there. What was that? Probably just the house settling. It sounds like it was coming from the kitchen. Relax, baby. There's no one here but you and me. Now, let's see what we can do about these clothes. Ooh. Is that good? Mm, that's right. Mm. Can you help me with that clip? Yeah, don't. Ow. Oh. Don't pull on it. Mm. Brian, don't sit on my hair. Jesus. You ever been on a boat before, girl? Uh. Mm. Okay, that's good. I just like that. There it goes again. There goes what again? I'm going to check it out. I'll guard the couch. Hello? Is someone in here? Oh! Kitty, you scared me. I bet you'd like a bowl of milk. Another kitty? Now what were you doing in the fridge? It's cold in there. Well, I guess if I'm getting one bowl of milk, I might as well make it two. I wonder where Peggy keeps her bowls. Another cat? And another? Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Calm down. I'll get you all some milk. I might have to run to the store. Ow! No scratching! Stop it, kitties! Brian! Hey, babe. Mind getting me a beer while you're in there? You asshole! Help me! Help me!
3D House of Cats. Coming soon. Hi, folks. Welcome to Scary Noises. This is your host, Todd Merriman. With me is my co-host, Mr. Matt Clayton. Hi. Uh, Lee Drake is still missing in action. I I don't know. I've called. I've texted the guy. Have we you heard from him? Not in like a year. We haven't heard from him in a year now. His his excuse last time was he was frozen into his house. Which, um, how well do you believe that? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I do know, though, in, in his place, though, we have a very special guest tonight, uh, Braden Kincaid. Braden, how are you? Doing pretty good. How's it going? It's fantastic. Glad to have you here. And, boy, we have an incredible show. Uh, that thing about cats... How about that? That that was that was pretty scary, right? We all want to see that movie. Admit it. After hearing that trailer, don't you want to see that movie? I know I do. I want to hear more about cats, though. Well, you're in luck. We had our good friend Mary read us a short piece about something that keeps leaving her presence. I can't really say when it started for sure. I mean, at the time, I barely even noticed. I just know that one morning, I was heading to work, and there was a dead mouse on my porch. It was furry and brown, but it was, it was slashed at the throat, lying on its side with one little black bead of an eye staring up at me. Looks like I have a secret admirer, I chuckled darkly, having conjured an image of a stray cat trying to win my approval. <laughs> Maybe a calico. That would be nice, I thought. They're such beautiful animals. That had to be it, a calico. Certainly not a black cat or any other omen of misfortune and evil. With no reason to dwell on it any further, I kicked the rodent off into the yard for the bugs to pick apart. I know it seems insignificant, hardly worth mentioning, honestly, except that a couple of weeks later, I found a dead bird on my porch. It was a cardinal, a female, you know, more brown than red, the color of uh, dried blood on a white pillowcase. Again, I scooped the dead thing away with my foot, but this time I looked around the bushes for further evidence of a cat, but no success. Well, when I got home that night, I put a bowl of milk out for my secret admirer. The next morning, I had to sweep up that broken bowl. The clumsy kitty must have knocked it off the porch and shattered it all over the sidewalk. <laughs> that must have scared the poor thing half to death. I knew I should have used a plastic bowl. I never did manage to see what I then thought was my feline friend. I mean, the gifts kept coming, but with such sporadic frequency, you could hardly call them regular occurrences. The morning I found a squirrel on my porch, I thought, <laughs> my feline admirer must be very strong. But I had to dismiss a cat was behind any of this when I found an, another cat. And then a possum. And then a raccoon. Do dogs do this kind of thing? Well, how then would that explain the cocker spaniel I found this morning? Its head twisted off. I called the police, but with no regular pattern, nothing documented to this point, no clue as to who or what might be doing it, they gave me that predictable answer. Not much we can do. Lock your deadbolt at night. Maybe invest in a security light. <sighs> so I guess I just have to wait to find my next present. What will it be? A German shepherd? A pony? A child? Why me? For the love of all things normal. Why me? Poor Mary. I know. That was called Something Keeps Leaving Me Presents. Yeah, Mary Proctor. You did a great job, girl. We're going to have you back. If she survives. Yeah, whatever keeps leaving her presents. Anyway. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, what? I just checked my phone, and uh, it looks like I have a voicemail from Lee. Oh, this ought to be good. Yeah, let's, let's play that. <sighs> What's up? It's Lee. So, I just woke up. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Uh, the house is freezing right now. I mean, you remember 
the last time I talked to you guys, it was during that polar vortex, and it's I, I was frozen into the house. Um, if what I've seen is true, then that's probably a year ago. I've been asleep for a year. I don't know how. I don't know why. All I know is, is I went to bed after calling you guys to let you know that I couldn't make it. And I woke up. My house is freezing cold. And it's apparently a year later. I don't know where Stacy is. I don't know where the kids are. All I know is, is that I'm here in this house by myself. I'm... I, I, I tried kicking on the door for like the last hour. I tried ramming my shoulders against the door for the last hour. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure something out. If I do, I'll give you a call back and let you know. All right, bye. Really? He he's playing the Rip Van Asleep Winkle card on us for a fucking year. Like, <laughs> please, do you expect us to believe that? Maybe his house is covered in ice again because it snowed again. It's six degrees outside. It's the middle of winter. Well, it's not the middle of winter, but it's still fucking winter. Like, does he actually expect us to believe this? Braden, can you believe this bullshit? Fucking Lee Drake. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. That Good says it all, Lord. right there. Anyway, speaking of people who've contacted us, we, we've got a new email from Forsyth. Ooh, ooh, that's right. And this is weird. Hold up. Let me open this up. Yeah, it came. There's a sound file and there's a, a letter on letterhead. Matt, do you have that? I do. Here. This, this um, will be on our website, scarynoises.net. Who's it from? It is from the Department of Dimensions. Um, and what's the date on that? The date is February 12th. 3022. Okay, I'm just going to read this out to you guys. Um, and again, it's going to be on the website so you can see it for yourselves. But this is what it says. Here it goes. Mr. Black, as you may well know, Operation Almanac's maiden mission was a resounding success. The crew of the 501 was met with apprehension, yet great interest by the primitives, in, in quotes, who accepted and exercised our technologies much quicker than we had anticipated. They were left with only a few minor farm tools, as small steps are necessary, but by Mission 20, we will be introducing moving parts and eventually digital technologies. Changes to the present will likely be undetectable until late 3024, but that is a short time to wait for the renaissance that lies ahead. What the hell, dude? On a related note, it goes on to say, any concerns you may have towards Doctor, and it's blacked out, uh, it looks like an S, an F, maybe a TH, I don't know. Uh, any concerns you may have towards Dr. Blank should be dissolved. While it is true that we lost trace of him two weeks ago, we are confident that there is nothing to fear. His final journal, journal entry before he fled is as follows. And it says here, let me zoom in. I've made a catastrophic mistake and no one will listen. My research was wrong. We are at far greater risk than I initially predicted. Time travel and dimensional travel are far too closely related and it is now only a matter of time before they begin to meld. We only have small glimpses of the horrors that lie on the other side, but if they reach our world, we face certain doom. How could I have been so foolish to think that furthering our civilization through artificial means would be without consequence? I am sure to be disposed of now that I am no longer needed. Jesus, I must flee and continue my research elsewhere. God help me. God help us all. And then the, the quote ends there and it says, Clearly the ravings of a madman. We will continue our searches, though I stress that any concerns you have towards Dr. Blank are unfounded. I shall keep you informed as matters progress. Signed, Jack Walters, Chairman, Department of Dimensions. 
Okay, so yeah, that's going to be up on the website, but they also uh, sent us an audio file. Have you heard what, this yet, Todd? What does any of this mean? I have no fucking clue. Let's, let's hear what this says. Welcome to Operation Almanac, where men become gods. Here at Operation Almanac, our goal is simple, to change the way we live in the future by changing the way we lived in the past. Though time travel has been a possibility for some time, this is the first instance where it has been considered stable enough as well as meaningful enough for extended usage. By traveling to the past to interact with our ancient ancestors, or primitives, we can share our modern technologies altering the timeline and propelling our societies forward by thousands of years. Sound too good to be true? Well, our crack team of scientists have engineered a surefire way to make this fantasy a reality. We hope you will enjoy your stay at the OA compound. Everything you need will be provided for you, so there will be no reason to leave. Just remember, with your participation, immortality could be right around the corner. I don't know what to make of that. What do you think? It, it sounds like when you get a new job and they're training you to do something. But who are, who is this Department of Dimensions? Why would they have a February 12th, 30, 22 as their date? I, I know this much. I bet the blacked out name is the... The, the guy who sent us that distress call. Yeah, you know, now that you say that, like, the, the mad ramble in the letter sounded quite a bit like that same kind of nutso nonsense that that guy had sent. And, I mean, it makes sense. He says he was beaming it to us from the future. I mean, I don't know how much I buy that, but... Right. It's... And we have the key to fix whatever these people did? You and me? And Lee, whenever he shows up? Yeah. Well, he's frozen into his home. Well, yeah. Braden, what do you make of all this? Dude, this is just weird. I agree. <laughs> and, and furthermore, like, how are we supposed to help? Okay, so in the letter, it said that they were giving primitives tools and technology and things like that. Are they... Do you think that this is maybe some big, complicated, giant conspiratorial ruse, like somebody trying to troll us and say that we are making people dumb with our transmissions? With with, that with we're our we're making people yeah. dumb. No, it sounded to me like they're taking modern technology into the past to accelerate evolution which just sounds like a terrible idea it really does but then why would we have the key to solving the problem is it because we make people dumber and so that we're like undoing all of the work they did could that be it i don't know i i want well i mean you're the one with whose computer has the line to the watcher that's that's true <laughs> that guy oh speaking of lines um so not only did we get that message from the Department of Dimensions. I also have an email here from, let's see, um, the Ipswich Community College. Not those guys again. Not, not Ipswich. Yeah. Really. It Which seems the department. <laughs> the Department of Metaphysics. Only in Ipswich would a community college <laughs> have a Department of Metaphysics. Where is this? Did they say they were in Kentucky or was it Indiana? I thought I was somewhere in New England. Oh, God, dude. Okay, so Dr. Kuntz from the Ipswich Community College's Department of Metaphysics has sent us an email with the subject line on the subject of fear. Now, there's no text in the email. There was just an MP3 file. So uh, here, we're going to play that for you right quick. Let's see what he has to say. True terror lays in the faces hidden in wood grain, water damage, patterns on dropped ceiling tiles, and old paint. To the eyes of a child, or perhaps someone who's suffered a near-death experience, those hidden faces are hesitation marks. They're the visible scars of being some other realms pushing their way into ours. True fear is living with these faces. Countless numbers of them on every wall, every stick of furniture, on every ceiling... 
To those who recognize the faces for what they are, true fear is the long wait for one of those beings to finally get through. So Dr. Kuntz, Department of Metaphysics, Ipswich Community College, on the nature of fear. Not only the nature of fear, but doesn't it seem a little weird and too synchronicitous to you that he would be talking about beings from the other side trying to push their way through hot on the heels of getting that letter and the thing from the Department of Dimensions? Maybe we need to talk to this guy some more. Maybe. Oh, and wait, dude, wait. Do you remember that Greg guy? <laughs> From the Whack Shack? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, with the with the Dr. Kaporky and the dude with the blow-up doll and the meat and the... Yeah. Wasn't that right by Ipswich Community College? Maybe. And he was like a... He was like a the 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 professor guy he was a he was a, a doctor of psychology yeah oh yeah okay so he would totally know about well he was speaking about you know his issues were the manifestation of his dead twin the only explanation of that I wonder if Doctor Kuntz and Doctor Kaporkian for lack of a better name if if they knew each other or they it sounds to me like they've attended a few faculty meetings. What's with all these doctors contacting us? Because the guy who sent us the message from the future, Dr. Blank. I don't know, man. I only have a bachelor's. <laughs> and I've got nothing. I have a high school diploma. You don't even have some college? No, not even a not a stitch. You're doing well for it. I got to say. Brayden, what do you think? What do you make of all of this? Honestly, this is making me a little uncomfortable, and I kind of want to go home now. Fair enough. Well, we were glad to have you. Yeah. And we were definitely glad to have our voice talent for this episode, Olivia Thompson, Mary Proctor. Who else chipped in on this one? Uh, Lucian Tomes was in on this one. Absolutely. And uh, as for the Department of De dimensions and and dr Kuntz. we have only foresight to thank for that and dr Kuntz himself um anyway th that's our episode for this week think it over email us your thoughts make contact at scary noises.net all right guys that's it for us i guess we'll see you again soon hopefully we've got more weird stuff to show you bye Thank you for allowing us to occupy your consciousness. Now go, warn the others. See what good it will do you. <laughs>